Hey, what's up guys? Today I definitely have a different kind of video for you that I've not done before. I'm gonna be dropping a ton of knowledge on you guys and you know, for sure, this is going to be the most valuable video that I have ever made. I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step breakdown of how I helped my client Alvaro lose 18.7 pounds of fat and gain 15 pounds of muscle in 180 days and how I literally completely transformed his physique using the cut CEO method. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide of how I helped him, but you can use these same methods within your own lifestyle. And I really think that this video will not only be life-changing for you, but it will create value for you for the rest of your life. So take some notes and come back to this video if you have to, and whatever you have to do, put away your devices, put away any distractions, because I'm going to be dropping some fire, guys. So you need to pay attention for this because I promise you it will help you. Now, real quick, before I get in the video, I have to say that I've put a lot of time uh, into preparing and making this video. There's over 50 pages, if I'm not wrong, 56. So at some point, I might actually go off script, skip some sections or maybe add some commentary because I feel very strongly that all of this is needed, but you might think otherwise. Right. So who is this for? So primarily this is for men, 25 years and up, skinny fat and or overweight. If you have an out of shape physique and you want to get in sick shape and you also wanna learn how to fit this into your existing lifestyle because the method I'm about to teach you is for people that are extremely busy and need a method to actually integrate into their existing lifestyle. Right, so let's get right into it. How to lose at least 10% of your body weight, pack on 15 pounds of lean muscle and keep it forever in 180 days or less using the Cut CEO Blueprint, right? And this is without getting the weight back, spending more than three to five hours a week in the gym, giving up your favorite foods, losing the hard earned progress, like losing your muscle mass or feeling weak. Now, before we start in the specific case study, which is Alvaro's case study, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, right? You see a lot of fitness influencers have been either genetically gifted or they have some other advantage like good upbringing with the right nutritional habits, and they've never quite been in your shoes. A lot of them have been fit their whole life, and then they sell their systems as if the system got them fit. I wasn't like that. I wasn't always this, you know, confident fitness guy. In fact, for most of my life, the first 20 plus years or so, I was completely out of shape, right? So if you look at these photos, if you look at the dress sense, you know, <laughs> if you just look at the clothes I wear, right? These are not clothes you wear to stand out. I was trying to fit in and I was definitely not proud of my physique in any way, shape or form. I had things like beach shirts. And if you're overweight, you know exactly what that is um, because those things never come off even when it's hot. And so my own journey got me to change my entire life, right? Once I got in shape, in sick physical shape that I was proud of, I started this channel and I started teaching you guys. Um, it changed how I felt about myself. It changed the way I carried myself. It changed the way other people looked at me. And you know, I wish that we didn't live in a world that's shallow or a world that limits your opportunities based on your appearance, but we do. And so this video is gonna show you how to get out of that, right? Because once you get fit, it changes every aspect and facet of your life. You name it, from dating to business to friendships. I could look in the mirror and love the man I saw. And now I've cracked the code and all my clients have now cracked the code on this, right? So for the last few years, I have been helping people get jacked, lose body fat and get fully optimized. Um, it's literally my passion, my lifeblood. It's what I live for, right? So what you will learn here, I'm gonna show you exactly how I helped my client Alvaro lose 18.7 pounds within 180 days while achieving a new ripped look that he had never had before. So I can literally show you the pictures here. This is Alvaro before the program, before we started. Um, this is him at the end of the priming phase where we've stripped uh, off all his body fat. This is him at the end of the power phase where we locked in his new body fat level uh, and literally doubled and even quadrupled his strength. Here you can see him literally 
being proud, sending me messages where he's maxed out the machines. We call it completing machines because once you max it out, what else is there to do but you know change the gym so move to a different exercise. Um, and arguably, you could say that at this stage, he could have quit and said, you know what, I'm pretty happy with where things are. Um, I don't need to go further. But we did go further. And this is him at the end of the physique stage, right? So if you compare these two guys from this guy, and if you just look at the facial expressions, right, the confidence he's gained, it's pretty cool. Right, so we have filled out his new frame with pounds of lean muscle, and he has just a completely different look to his body at the end of this. Right, so who's this for? If you are looking to lose 10% of your body weight that you will not get back while building a new frame of muscle that you keep forever, then this is absolutely for you. If you're sick of feeling lost when it comes to getting ripped, and you need a simple and proven blueprint that you can fit into your existing lifestyle, making your life better, unlike most cookie cutter programs, right, that we can probably admit are not that great, then this is definitely for you. And if you don't want to eat green beans, chicken breast, and canned tuna just to lose a few pounds, then this is absolutely for you because we don't have to do that. If you feel like you've tried everything, but still don't have the physique you want and I've always dreamt of, then this is for you. And if you know you have the potential to unlock the best version of yourself, but you just need the guidance and accountability to get you there, then this is 100% for you. So also super important, right? If any of these sound like you, you can literally just click off because this video is not for everyone. So who's this not for? If you want to keep trying to get ripped using the traditional methods that have been holding you back for years, then this is absolutely not for you. If you're looking for a quick fix uh, solution and don't want to use a proven system that will keep you in shape for the rest of your life, this is not for you. If you are not ready to allocate at least three to five hours a week to the gym, this is not for you. And if you simply do not believe that you can reach the ultimate version of yourself, then this is not for you. So guys, the truth about getting ripped that nobody will tell you, right? You actually can get ripped in a relatively short amount of time without giving up your favorite foods or spending countless hours in the gym, all while keeping your results forever. However, most men aren't capable of doing it because they simply do not understand how to fuel their body with the food they eat, how to effectively and efficiently stimulate muscle growth in the gym, and how to use rest days to fuel fat loss and speed up muscle growth. What they do instead is the quick fix way or trying a bit of everything uh, until they get burnt out or injured. But don't worry, I'm obviously not going to let that happen to you. Uh, and you're smart anyway, because you're watching this video, right? So the one belief you absolutely must let go of, right? Understand there's no such thing as I'm just too busy, or that won't work for me. Okay. So let's just get that straight out of your head. You don't have to work out for countless hours in the gym, three to five, like I said, is enough or have superhuman genetics to become the ultimate version of yourself that you were always meant to be. And if you want to be that guy, I'm going to show you exactly how to navigate around the issues we just mentioned before and how I helped my client Alvaro lose so much weight that he is getting compliments every single day from his friends, family, co-workers and the guys in his fight club, right? which is an amazing feeling, obviously. So who exactly am I, right? In case you don't know me, here's a brief backstory of how I got here. Like I mentioned before, for years, my focus has been on coaching men to get the body and health that they've always wanted. In the process, I have worked with countless coaches myself. I have tried almost every protocol and tracked the results of all of this in a wild looking spreadsheet. And I've done it daily for the past five years. At any moment, I can tell you my fat level, my weight, and at least a 30 other metrics. And I've done this every single day. And from this obsession with transforming my body, I have developed systems that I have not seen anywhere else on the internet. 
You could call it biohacking or health coaching. It doesn't really matter. But in addition to fat loss, I've also been able to create the deepest and most regenerative sleep, double my focus and energy, build a physique that commands respect and get endless confidence in sales, social and business situations. And that's why it's such a big passion for me. And that's why I'm making this video to show you how you can do it too. So my stats, I'm 5'5", 165 centimeters tall and 158 pounds uh, with six pack abs, obviously. And I can effortlessly stay in shape that most men would kill to be in. And I'm not saying this to piss you off, but that's just what I look like, right? And there's no, no real hiding it. I know how to get jacked and stay jacked. I'm extremely passionate about this lifestyle, as you can tell, guys, um, because I believe that it is the key to unlocking the highest levels of your potential as a man in all aspects of life. One of the biggest misconceptions about being in great shape is that it's nothing but vanity and nothing can be further from the truth. Getting in great shape will have a ripple effect across your entire life, every picture and every conversation. Keto, zero carb, super clean eating, cardio heavy, aerobic type stuff, you know, paleo and all of that crap, right? Okay, maybe it's not like complete bullshit, but if you have tried those methods and you are not in the shape you want, then there's probably a reason for that, right? All of this combined led me to create the Cut CEO Blueprint. It is essentially my playbook that I built through my own trial and error from over seven years of research, hiring my own coaches and coaching others. So this is literally like the entire method that I use to get my clients in shape and to get them from the picture on the left to the picture on the right, right? So here you can see some of my clients. This is Diego, um, he's actually the brother of Alvaro and this is him before he had his um, crazy accident. He lost over 20 pounds in just the 10 weeks he was with me before he had his crazy accident and even gained enough strength to win a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu championship against this absolute tank of a man. This is my client, Tom. Overall, he lost 40 kilos, right? <laughs> so that's, it's no joke. That's 80 pounds of weight. You can see him here, um, you know, before the program, somewhere around the middle of the program and then towards the end, looking pretty nice. We have Joel, Guernsey Joel, Florida Joel. Um, we have Pedro, also lost 25 kilos or 50 pounds um, in the program is a really tall guy and then obviously there's myself going from this shape to this one and i just want to break it all down for you in this video right so the cut ceo blueprint the step-by-step -step guide part in the following steps i will outline the entire process a to z of what i did to accomplish these results so that you can do the same and how you can use the cut ceo blueprint to lose at least 10% of your body weight, pack on 15 pounds of lean muscle and learn how to keep it forever in 180 days or less. So the Cut CEO Blueprint is an advanced system. So don't worry if it sounds a little confusing. I'm going to break it all down for you into simple steps. The whole method is broken into three essential phases. We have the priming phase, the power phase, and then the physique phase or peaking phase. So phase one, the priming phase. The first phase is a 60 to 120 day leaning out and prep phase. It is the foundation of everything else. In this phase, you'll have higher rep ranges and higher volume when you train. And I'll teach you how to use strategic fasting and feasting to fuel and protect your muscle while starving your fat. Next, we have the power phase. It's a 30 to 60 day strength building phase. In this phase, the most important part is that we will lock in your new lean or low body fat baseline. You'll learn how to use hybrid workout system that will double or even quadruple your functional strength. And that's not a typo. My clients regularly max out machines and I'm obviously using the same method to get to my insane lifting numbers. So this is me doing a 900 pound plus leg press. I believe in this specific video, it's a 918 pound leg press as a 156 pound guy. You can see the reactions when you go in the gym, 
and you use this method, uh, people will look. Let them. And there's a video as well that you can click on in your own time. Go have a look of me doing a 921 pound leg press. This phase literally blows people's minds. And this is an essential phase that sets you up for maximum muscle growth. And phase three is the physique phase. This is a 60 to 90 day body sculpting phase. In this phase, we will increase your calories and focus on adding muscle in all the right places to complete an aesthetic and functional physique. And because everyone's different and your genetics and muscle makeup will dictate the actual structure of your muscle, as you'll learn later on, we will design a program that specifically matches your body type and doesn't just apply a cookie cutter principle, right? To cut CEO blueprint, there are four foundational pillars and these are actually foundational pillars to anyone's fitness. In fact, if you're not getting the results you want, I can diagnose where you're going wrong by just looking at these four things. In the short term, you can sometimes get away with neglecting one or two of them for a little bit. But then in the long term, you can never rise above the lowest pillar. Another way to think about these four pillars is like dominoes, right? You want them all to be aligned and pointing the same direction so that we can hit that goal and move on to the next one. And again, don't worry if this sounds a little cryptic. I'll explain what they do and how they work in just a second. All right, so the first pillar is renewal. And like the graphic illustrates, this is all about renewing your body. It's re about rebuilding the parts that have been damaged. And we start with renewal because it is the most important part, right? You don't actually grow in the gym, but when you're sleeping and recovering. So the renewal pillar has several variables or strength. And it goes all the way from micro to macro level. So this is rest times between sets, sleep, muscle periodization, rest days, and deloads. And the most important part for you to understand is this. Your body does not differentiate between physical stress and emotional or mental stress. In fact, in the scientific theory, they literally have a name for it. Single stress bucket theory or just stress bucket theory. I know it's not a terribly scientific name, but that's what they call it. And so what this means in terms of transforming your physique and making you feel great while you do it is that we absolutely must optimize your recovery, especially if you are in a high stress job or if you're running a business and have a lot of emotional stress, right? So here's a little illustration that I've made to illustrate it. So the green line at the bottom here is your performance. Stress load is here from green at the bottom, orange in the middle and red lining at the top. And what optimal and poor recovery looks like, right? So the smaller the line on this ruler, the smaller the recovery event, if you like, the item. So you could imagine this as being either rest days or breaks. And the big line would be a proper deload when you're taking a week off, you know, at least 50% of the load off. And so the idea is that you are getting more and more stress on your body, but you never actually let it sit in the red line. Whereas what recovery looks like for most people is that they start at a low stress level, progress to an the orange or red one, and then just kind of carbaffle between orange and red. And then wonder that their performance overall is not moving upwards, that is just kind of plateauing. And so it's very important that we fix this and I'll show you how. So the second pillar is nutrition. It's pretty self-explanatory, obviously. It's all the things you put inside your body. So that's what your meals, snacks, protein powders, water, supplements, and all that stuff is. Nutrition is obviously super important and I could be sitting here for hours discussing the finer points. But at the end of the day, if there's only one thing you take away from this presentation is that the most important metrics of nutrition will be protein and calories. We always start with that for all the new clients. As long as your protein is within a certain range and your calories are within a certain range, we can make majority of the body recomposition uh, goals happen, right? So absolutely macros are important but protein and calories are absolute kings which also means that you don't need fancy meals or broccoli or canned tuna to get the body you want as long as your calories and protein is on point you're mostly there 
I'll cover a few other bits uh, to get you know the most out of your nutrition, but just remember protein and calories is where it's at. The third pillar is headspace. And this is another one of those super neglected parts of most fitness protocols. This is the mental or mindset part plus the emotional management and the emotional logic part. And I know this sounds super woo-woo, but trust me, this is like 50% of the game. When you're looking to collapse years of training into just a few short months, like losing 10% of your body weight and adding 15 pounds of muscle in just 180 days, then you have to optimize your headspace. And so headspace is divided into two subcategories. We have consistency, and intensity and at the start consistency is key because even if you have the best system in the world but you can't stay motivated enough to show up and do the work then you're not getting very far right so at the start that's what we focus on and later i'll show you how to unlock the intensity as well it is true that most people don't train with enough intensity in fact they don't even realize just how much strength they have Right? We've all heard of hysterical strength, as it's called, where mothers lift the car off their baby um, and even hold it there for longer than a power lifter would. This is the kind of strength you have access to, and I'll show you how to tap into it. And so we have to rewire your brain so that you have access to these higher levels of strength, basically on demand. In the CUT CEO blueprint, we use the principles of cognitive behavioral therapy. We don't use it like the way therapists would, but we still use the principles of it to set up routines for you so that your brain is reprogrammed to operate smoother, better, and for more success. And I'll show you how to do you know, the same in just a second. So the fourth pillar, which is dynamics. And dynamics means movement. This is the physical part of the training. It's the cardio, resistance training, all of things like that. So that means all factors like splits, sets, reps, periodization, form, intensity, movement patterns, stabilization, and driver strength, all of those factors come into play in this element. So the basics of building muscle are quite simple, really. We've known them for many years, but they're often misunderstood. To grow the muscle, you must give it an adaptive stimulus or a signal to grow because growing your muscle is terribly expensive for your body and it's not strategically advantageous, so your body will resist it. It's not just about exercising or lifting. You need to send your body a strong signal that you deserve that muscle. And the part that everybody leaves out of their programs or in fact off the internet for the most part is that you don't just have one muscle type. You have two distinct muscle fibers. Type one or endurance fibers, also called slow twitch, and type two or power fibers, also called fast twitch. And then even those further subdivide, but we're not gonna get into that. Um, but the point I'm making is that each of them needs an appropriate stimulus to grow. Right? So your genetics will determine the percentages of type 1 versus type 2 um, that you have in each individual muscle. Your calves are different to your shoulders, to your traps, to your forearms. And because of this muscle split, you know, Usain Bolt is incredibly jacked, whereas like ultra marathoners, marathoners, the best guys are skinny, you know, and they can't even get jacked if they want to. Those muscles get trained two distinct ways. And your genetics will determine the percentages of type one versus type two you have in each individual muscle, right? That's why the same workouts don't work the same way for two different people. That's also why the workouts will change from phases one, two, and three, because we'll be training these fibers individually uh, because the goals at each phase will also change. Again, if you take just one thing away from this training, then that should be it train both types of muscle fibers instead of just lifting and hoping for the best. This is why the results that we get are so far from the norm. So by watching this video, you're already miles ahead of the pack. Um, so now that you know what Cut CEO Blueprint is made of, let's look at exactly how we implemented it. So the key, the absolute key to making this work is that you can't skip phases and you can't cheat yourself 
yes, you absolutely can lose 10% of your body weight or more, gain 15 pounds of muscle in 180 days or less without giving up your favorite foods or spending more than three to five hours in the gym. But you must follow the steps without jumping to the last phase. Think of it like building a house, right? So right now we're in stage zero, the planning stage. And we've just arrived and you have this tent as a house, right? So the first step is, is laying the foundation. So it's clearing all of this crap, which would be your fat, laying a strong foundation based on the four pillars and preparing everything for what's to come. Stage two, power is about building the frame. If you've ever seen how they build Burj Khalifa or any of these other frame uh, buildings, they have a strong frame that is at the end covered up with all the nice parts like windows and whatnot and helipads, but you need the strong frame. That's what power stage or stage two will give you. And finally, physique is where you get all the nice stuff. This is where you will rapidly add muscle in all the right places and Stage three is gonna look like magic. And that's why everybody wants to jump to stage three, expecting that if they just follow our eating plan, if they just follow our training methods, they will get the same results, but you won't. You can't skip the stages, just like you can't skip the stages in construction. You don't wanna be that guy who goes to the gym for five years and ends up looking the same at the end of it. And you know those guys are out there. I'm sure you've seen them in your own gym in the last five years. Probably can see the same guy in the same corner doing the same thing. And probably you're thinking to yourself, how come he hasn't changed at all? He's not jacked. Nothing's changed. He's just there doing the same thing. A um, bit wasteful if you ask me. Alvaro's journey. So phase one, priming. So this is where we clear the ground and lay the foundation, like I said, uh, for your physique and health. The whole point of this phase is so that we remove the body fat and prepare your body so that we can eventually focus on adding lean muscle without the fat, right? So this phase is essential. Even if you're a skinny fat type of guy who doesn't have that much to lose, I still suggest we go through this and remove the fat that you have so that when we enter the next stages, you can eat a lot more calories without any fear of adding fat. What a lot of guys that are skinny fat or fat or just overweight do is exactly the wrong thing. They don't have the shape they want and they think, oh, well, I'll just add the muscle and then I'll look better, right? And that makes them what? A literal fatter version of the guy that they already are, right? It doesn't change the physique. In the words of Greg the Set, if you're fat, you've already bulked, right? So to illustrate how this works, take a look at the charts I made. The cut CEO blueprint is this one, and that's the regular cycle. So the red line is your relative body fat level, and the green line is your relative muscle mass. What you want to do is get in the fit zone, which is the green area right here, and get out of the unfit zone, which is all the red shaded area over here. And that means a relatively lower body fat and a relatively higher muscle amount so that the combined effect creates a very physically attractive look. So being in the fit zone means that you have a relatively low body fat amount and relatively high muscle amount, whereas the unfit zone is exactly the opposite. You have a relatively speaking higher amount of body fat and lower amount of muscle. Starting to bulk from the unfit zone is an emotional roller coaster because every time you bulk up to gain muscle, you get even fatter than you were, right? And every time you go on a cutting diet, you lose that muscle and strength much faster than you lose the fat. And you'll hate it because you're hungry, you're cold, you're miserable. Losing weight is already hard enough, but when it also steals the hard earned progress you've made, it's an emotional disaster. So what do people do? They decide to bulk and get the muscle back and the cycle restarts. And so many guys are stuck between cutting and bulking and never looking the way they want. I have been there, it sucks. And we're getting out of that cycle right now. So after the priming phase for the rest of your fitness journey, you will be in the fit zone. At this point, when you take your shirt off, 
you will look good. Bedroom, boardroom, or beach, uh, or any pictures or any occasion, you will always look good and feel confident uh, in taking your shirt off. And it doesn't matter if you're bulking or cutting or on a holiday experiencing uh, fitness, amnesia, just eating bad food, you will still retain the muscle you want. You will still retain the look you want. And you'll always be able to look in the mirror and get a boost of confidence. And that is why we have it here at the very start. Because there has to be a process of you cutting down all of the body fat in order for you to actually build a lean foundation that will last you for the rest of the journey. So for Alvaro, that process took about 100 days, during which we cut down 18.7 pounds of fat, which is about 15% of his body weight. And if you don't have that much to lose, yours will be shorter. Simple as that. So during this stage, our goals are to lose maximum fat, retain maximum muscle, and develop work capacity in type one or everyday use endurance muscle fibers. We'll also fix your posture, repair injuries, and eliminate chronic joint and muscle pain. We'll also refine your lifting form. We will optimize your sleep, focus, and lifestyle, and we'll set up your baseline nutrition habits and systems so that you don't have to think about them anymore. Right, so let's look at the individual pillars. Priming phase, pillar one, renewal. So Alvaro is a busy entrepreneur, right? So he speaks, he travels at conferences, he does presentations. Um, if you're into online marketing at all, you'll know who that is, that's Todd Brown. So these guys are pretty out there um, doing big things, right? So he's really busy. And during this time, his brother had a near fatal accident that left him in a coma. That's his brother right there. An accident that he's still recovering from, right? He's still learning how to walk. So Alvaro ran his business together with his brother when the business collapsed. The added stress of medical bills, paying the stuff, and you can just imagine how much stress he was experiencing. Remember the sting single stress bucket theory we discussed? Well, this meant that we had to engineer a protocol to help him manage that stress while his fitness still stayed on point. That's why I wanted to share this case study because it's not the most impressive maybe in terms of um, you know numbers on a scale, but it's the most impressive in terms of overcoming challenges. So we started by engineering his sleep. We cooled down his bedroom, even added special equipment to cool his bed. We created complete blackout conditions in the bedroom and implemented all device ban the last hour before bed. We also set up routines to help him relax his mind and stop his racing thoughts from disrupting his sleep. You can find these in all of my other videos, so I'm not gonna dwell too long on that. We added also a deload week once every five to six weeks to help him fully recover from the daily stress load. And we created a workout, uh, a flexible workout plan, as you'll see in the next stage. All right, next stage, priming stage nutrition. We implemented a flexible diet plan and we started focusing only on protein and calories, like I said before. And then after that, we stuck to simple rules like respecting the satiety signals, prioritizing protein and Jacob's razor. Now I'm Jacob and I'm allowed to, you know, name things after myself if that's the first time I've ever seen it. And Jacob's razor basically means actions that increase calorie consumption will when reversed, produce an approximately equal decrease in calorie consumption. And so if we kind of zoom in here, we can see that processed foods increase calorie consumption, whereas whole foods, which is the opposite of processed, will decrease. It's very simple. Whatever works for you to increase calorie consumption, meaning that you would eat more calories naturally, if you do the opposite of that, you will decrease your calorie consumption automatically. So you can make a little list of all the behaviors that you do that make you eat more and keep that list. Because when we switch to the next stage and you actually need to eat more calories after fasting, a lot of people find that their appetite is just not the same. They actually aren't hungry. They don't want to eat more food. But now that you have to eat more food, what we do with this rule is we look at the behaviors that made you decrease your calorie consumption and we do the opposite. So for example, you eat more carbs. And if you eat more carbs like an hour, 30 minutes before a meal, you'll find that your glucose will spike, your insulin will spike, and you'll actually be ravenously hungry. So you can eat more. In simple terms, it's the opposite of a hunger causing behavior that creates the reverse effect, right? It's simple rules like this that will get you the initial momentum without doing any major life changes. 
And after we had established the basic nutrition habits, we shifted to the metabolic fasting system. Now, again, I won't go into full detail here on metabolic fasting. You will find other videos um, on my TikTok and I'll probably make a separate video for you. But here's the overview. First, we reduce these carbohydrate intake. We increase the duration of fasts until you got comfortable with fasting for longer periods. We're looking at 24, 36, 42 hours. And then we added carbs back in. Carbs are the key to successful fasting. A high carb diet will make fasting really difficult, especially at the start. And that's because you lack metabolic flexibility, meaning your body doesn't know how to switch from eating carbohydrates to eating fats effectively. And all the negative side effects like hunger, feeling weak that people experience from fasting are for that reason. So over the next 30 days, we built the habits and systems to start metabolic fasting. He was fasting 38 to 42 hours, two, sometimes three times per week on his rest days and feasting like a king on his gym days. On the gym days, he was eating 15 calories per, pa per pound of body weight, 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight, about 75 to 120 grams of carbohydrates, and we added fat to backfill the remaining calories. Now, if you've ever done any diet of any sort, you'll know that 15 calories per pound of body weight is a very high number, right? And there are a lot of reasons we do that, right? One is to fuel a better workout. Two, to protect the muscle while you're working out. Three, added flexibility on eating days, like cheat meals or meals out with friends, with your girlfriend, wife. And three, to refeed the metabolism to prevent metabolic slowdown. And in case you didn't know, metabolic slowdown is why most diets fail and why people get their weight back so quickly after they finish a diet. So to illustrate it, here's a little chart. This blue line here is the speed of metabolism and the green line here is weight loss progress. So after the fast, the metabolism would slow down, but we give it extra calories like the 15 per pound of body weight. And so the metabolism actually returns to where it was before. So we, cause we have an increased calorie day. After that, we'd go for another fast and you'd have a massive spike in weight loss but your metabolism would, stow, would go to slow down again. But we have a higher calorie day again, like you can see it right here, a metabolism goes back to normal. And then on the days when you're not working out and also not going, uh, you're not fasting, we eat at maintenance or slightly below maintenance calories. And the reason we do this is because this way we can create a much larger calorie deficit without sacrificing muscle, losing performance, um, eating out of a meal prep bag, or feeling weak and unfocused. And the part that really is shocking to people who have never fasted like this is that you'd think you'd be hungry. You'd think that that long fast would make you hungrier, but it's exactly the opposite if you do this right. Alvaro literally forgot that he was fasting or even on a diet. And people who have never fasted like this just can't understand how easy it becomes. It's like an invisible diet that you forget you're even on. Plus, the fasting sharpens your mind and senses so that you can do the best work you have ever done. So this is the favorite part of all the guys trying the system and getting used to it. And I literally get dozens of comments about it every single week. So you can see how people, you know, they're surprised. They didn't realize just how little hunger you actually experience once you implement the system. Right, next part of the priming phase is headspace. Like with the other sections, it would take me hours to fully explain this. So I'll kind of provide you with a 10,000 foot view and really try, and try my best to shorten this long, long um, how-to video. So like we discussed, there are two parts to Headspace, consistency and intensity. And at the start, obviously we focus on consistency. So to do that, we use a two-part system, which is RSVP ramp. So RSVP is all about mapping out your journey. It breaks down like this. The R stands for real decision, S stands for set expectations, V stands for visualize results clearly, and P stands for planning the journey. So the first part is really building a dynamic game plan that helps you with sticking to the protocol. So all about consistency. We call it mapping out your journey so that you have a real sense for where you are and where you are going. You need an outline of the pitfalls and common sticking points and you need to know what to do to prepare for the emotional and physical impact. Because when you have the bigger picture in mind, you will know what the full journey looks like, and it's much easier 
to overcome the obstacles that block your way. This was a crucial part for Alvaro, given his huge amount of stress. Having that clarity of knowing exactly what to do, where he's at, and what's expected gave him the bigger picture. He knew that every day took him closer to his goal. Next, we have the ramp part, which we use to gradually increase the intensity of the protocol. And it breaks down like this. R stands for ramp intensity. A stands for add systems. M stands for manage fallbacks. And P starts for practice persistence. This is all about building little systems and habits to make everything easier, like in the nutrition habits like hiring a cook using your special recipe and hiring guides, or simple things like having a protein shake before you go out shopping or for a meal out so that you're less hungry and less influenced by emotional decisions, and a million other easy and automatic behaviors that just become a part of you so you forget you're even doing them. Overall, I advise you to keep new behaviors to a minimum until you build momentum and they become second nature. In this stage, we follow a, uh, the Navy SEAL motto, which is slow is steady, steady is smooth, and smooth is fast. And as you progress, we add systems that force you to do what's needed even when you don't feel like it. This is where the things like community and having a coach and positive peer pressure and camaraderie comes in. And so if you can find a way to keep yourself accountable, do it, it really will help. Next, we have dynamics. And I'll start by saying something crazy. Lifting doesn't get you gains. I know that you've been told that it does, but it doesn't. Only the right kind of lifting gets you gains past the newbie gain stage. And this fucks up so many guys because in the early stages, they follow some half-baked program and they see progress. And then they believe that it was that program that gave them the gains, but it wasn't. What gave them the gains was the fact that they were untrained and literally any stimulus strong enough would stimulate muscle adaptation. But then once the newbie gains are over, they stagnate and they don't see any further progress. And this is where guys, you know, bang their head against the wall, go to the gym, same routine, many years, no results, and eventually they either give up or turn to steroids and fuck up their body. Imagine learning how to play the guitar. If you learned it using the wrong technique, even if you practice that wrong technique for 10,000 hours, do you really think you'd be a master at the end? Of course not, right? you'd be stuck at your newbie stage, knowing only how to do the newbie things with your messed up technique. So our goal is not to go to the gym. Our goal is to find the right stimulus that will force your body to adapt. And that's very important. We're only repeating that stimulus and not wasting time on things that don't fuel the fire. So at this stage, here are our goals. To torch the maximum amount of fat, keep the maximum amount of muscle and prepare your body for the next phase you'll notice that we are not focusing on adding muscle in this stage. And so this means that we'll be stimulating the forgotten fiber that almost nobody is focusing on. And those are type one muscle fibers. This is where even the most experienced guys experience muscle growth as a benefit um, in calorie deficit, because in effect, they're getting newbie gains from an untrained muscle fiber type. So for Alvaro's busy schedule, we implemented what I call a primal six pattern. And if you're ever short on time or just don't know, don't have a program ready, you can always follow the primal six. And that is vertical push, vertical pull, and what I call vertical legs. So these are your squatting movements. And horizontal push, horizontal pull, and what I call horizontal legs. But that just basically means bending and unbending or hip hinge. And it's good to separate them too because of how much sitting we do and because of how the regular movements impact your body. So it was a full body workout split three times per week. We had higher rep ranges of 20 to uh, 25 reps. We were alternating focused on chest, back and legs on each of the full body days. We had one exercise with two sets per primary movement pattern, i.e. the primal six, and two to three accessory movements like arms, calves, abs, traps, neck, postural muscles, and all of the other smaller ones. And a 90 to 120 second break between sets. So this is almost closer to cardio. The next factor was actual cardio. Most fat loss protocols will have tons of cardio because people believe that that's how you lose fat. And it makes people hate them. And cardio is a lot less effective than you'd imagine, especially the high impact cardio like running, which interferes with recovery. 
over time that will lead to a significant muscle loss. So for cardio, we focus on slow things like walks, hikes, and any other activity that you can actually enjoy doing for a longer period of time. Here you can see a breakdown for standard fat loss protocols. Intense cardio is like 80, 80 something percent of, of the whole protocol. For us, it's like 75%, meaning you will be doing an hour or sometimes even two a day of whatever you want. Just walk, go for a hike, put an audiobook or a podcast or get on some business calls and go for a walk. Clear your head. Those walks will add up fast. But the goal is that you enjoy it. So if you are doing an extra one to two hours a day, you should come out better from it. For Alvaro, that was a podcast or audiobook walk. It also gave him the time to decompress and speed up his mental and even physical recovery. We started slow and he eventually built this up to a one to two hour a day walk split across few sessions. You don't absolutely need to do cardio, right? Even this slow cardio, but it definitely helps. And another benefit for, for his high volume style of training is posture improvement. Postural muscles can't be trained effectively with a few reps, right? So you need a lot of volume and repetitions. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, we train uh, with high volume at the start because we'll be working on your postural muscles. And you can check your own posture right now. You know, how are you sitting? How are you standing? You can look in the mirror. And I bet that we both can agree that you need some improvement. The thing is the postural muscles cause most of your pain. They disrupt your sleep. They impact your productivity because when your posture is poor, you're actually blocking off blood vessels that bring oxygen and nutrients to your brain. And so your brain is actually less active. And all of this comes as a downstream effect from having a poor posture. So by fixing the posture, we'll not only eliminate joint pains and injuries, we'll also improve your productivity. For Alvaro, that meant that we worked on his shoulder and pec area, lower back and hips. And he had multiple injuries from his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, fighting days. And so we wiped away chronic pain that he had for years. He literally thought that he'd never get rid of it. And now he barely remembers even having it. And another benefit of doing low intensity, high rep training in this specific phase is that we can really focus on proper technique. Good technique doesn't just reduce injury risk. It also helps you lift heavier weights for the next phase so that we can move on to the power phase and you can do the lifts properly with your eyes closed. So you can put all of your attention and focus on moving the weight instead of you know, half thinking, am I doing this right? Are my hands in the right position? Where's the bar? Is it, you know, skewed? All of that stuff. All of these things are building the foundation that is essential for the next stage in your development. All right, so that was a lot to take in. Uh, it's a bit like drinking from a fire hose, right? And trust me, I have really tried to make this as short and as simple as I possibly can. But as you saw, maybe I'm not doing the best job. It's already, you know, we're at page probably... 35 out of 55, right? So these are more advanced concepts, but that is why I'm putting this out there because you're not, you're not going to find these things anywhere else. And because they're advanced concepts, we also get advanced results, like losing 10% of your body weight and packing on 15 pounds of lean muscle in just 180 days, just like Alvaro's. This stuff will really change your life. And once you put your these principles into practice, I promise you they'll feel easy, natural, and automatic. It's really trying to take it all in that causes issues for people. Because when I actually coach you through it, we do it one single step at a time, and it always makes sense, and it's very easy to implement. Having to take it in all at once like this um, is definitely more of a challenge. All right, guys. So next we have phase number two, which is power. So power phase is all about developing raw power and building work capacity in type two muscle fibers. So we'll focus on developing optimal mot uh, motor engrams, meaning activating the right muscles the right way at the right time and stabilization. These are the two biggest power blockers that limit your growth strength and cause literally all of your injuries. In this stage, the goal is to create a bulletproof body and joints. During this stage, You'll keep burning fat and adding muscle, aka body recomposition, but it's only a bonus. It's only a side benefit. We don't focus on that. The biggest reason 
for this stage is to lock in your new body fat set point, meaning that your body will now naturally sit at a much lower body fat level, even if you go on a holiday or relax for a bit, meaning no more yo-yo dieting effect. After this phase, that's it. You're done with that part of your life. So congratulations. After this stage, you'll firmly be in the fit zone. And as long as you don't completely stop gym for years, you will always look good. So goals for this phase, lock in the new body fat set point, develop max power, increase type two work capacity, develop strong stabilizer muscles, right? So by the way, in case you didn't know, the power triangle for how you get stronger is literally a triangle. It's the driver strength, meaning your core main muscle, stability, meaning can you stabilize the weight, and activation, can you fire the right muscle groups at the right time to perform the movement. Right, um, develop optimal motor engrams, meaning proper firing sequence in the muscles, and develop bulletproof joints. So shoulders, lower back, knees, all of the problem stuff, this is where we permanently get rid of it. And obviously add new muscle while still burning fat, but it's just a side benefit. So power phase renewal. On the high intensity days, we increase these rest breaks to about four to five minutes between sets. Some people say it's crazy, but if you're doing high intensity, that's where you should be at. You need to be fully rested, not just be looking at the clock. We also reduce the active recovery volume. So that meant no more walks. At this stage, it was also important to pay attention to more tangible recovery metrics. So the metric we use within Cut CEO is the finger tap test to track recovery metrics, right? So I showed you that chart earlier with, you know, the recovery and having, you know, getting out of the red zone. This is how we can track for when you need the deload. We follow the system as an early warning signal, right? And it's very simple. Take a 60 second finger tap test, watch for a 15 to 30% dip in tap speed over a day or two, and then apply deload week. Super simple. This is what Olympic teams use. And so we use it as well. We find it works great. Literally takes 60 seconds and you can Google finger tap test. You'll find many free options and you can do it from your phone, from your computer, uh, anywhere, right? It just takes 60 seconds. People don't do it, but it really, really works well to track your recovery and to tell us very clearly when you need to take a little break so that you can go even harder the next week. So phase two, nutrition. In this stage, we increased Alvaro's calories to slightly above maintenance and kept the protein high. So in this phase, protein was one gram per pound of body weight and calories were about 12 to 13 per pound of body weight. We also increased the carbs, especially on the main lifting days. We're aiming for about one to 1.5 grams of carbs per pound of body weight. So if you're a 150 pound guy, you'd be eating 150 to 225 grams of carbohydrates. And if you want to have a more advanced setup, so where the carbs don't cause hunger and you can actually get more of a, you know, more juice out of the carbs that you eat, we use an advanced uh, macro timing schedule. So again, I've not seen it anywhere else. So if you just swipe this, you'll probably improve your nutrition by a good 10, 20%. So fats, you eat up until two to four hours before a workout then you skip them right before, right after, and then you can have them in the evening. And carbohydrates, you time two to four hours before a workout, eat them throughout the workout, usually in terms of shakes or like some sort of glucose pill, and then have immediately after the workout. And protein, you can basically eat all the way throughout the day. Some people do it during the workout as a protein shake. I find it can cause nausea, uh, so we don't do it. Anyways, at this stage, Alvaro was gaining strength very fast and was ready to implement a more advanced macro timing system, like the one I just explained, to fuel his heavy workouts. So I made this little diagram. Um, another thing that we implemented is we eliminated fasting, right? Like I said, fasting will reduce and reset your appetite. So that means that it becomes near impossible to keep up with the new calorie diet. Right? You'd think that 12 to 13 calories per pound of body weight, meaning eating at maintenance um, or just above, would not be hard to hit. But after fasting, your appetite signals have been reset. It's, you know, I can't stress this enough. And so you'd struggle with the opposite, eating more. So we dropped the fasting. Phase two, headspace. In this power phase, 
we reset Alvaro's vision and goals. And this is important because up until now, we've been focusing on losing fat and weight, but because now we're shifting the attention to strength and not so much on the weight, because that's gonna stay relatively stable, um, we had to focus on strength as the new metric. This is why most maintenance phases fail. People don't change the target and nobody likes putting in a lot of effort just to stay in the same place. Next thing we did is we implemented a strength mindset. And it's the reason why in this stage, you can expect to increase your strength by as much as 200 to 400%. This is just as much a physical skill as the actual physical muscle development will do. So we'll be learning how to push your body closer to the failure while keeping the form. And also look, this is not some woo-woo crap. This is a real skill that you can develop. You've all heard of, you know, mothers lifting their cars or what in scientific terms they call hysterical strength. And I'm here to tell you that that level of strength can be unlocked and it can be trained. So I'll prove it to you right now. Do this exercise with me. Take your right hand and grab your left, left wrist and squeeze as hard as you possibly can, right? Notice how much strength is exerted uh, on the wrist. And next, notice how much pressure there is in your mind to actually create the squeeze. There's mental tension. You're thinking about squeezing. You're hemorrhaging thoughts trying to get the squeeze um, to happen. And so I want you to now put your hand around the wrist. Don't squeeze yet. And as you will start to squeeze, I want you to fully relax your mind and place your focus purely on the squeezing. Notice just how much stronger this squeeze becomes as you relax your mind and effectively parts of your body that are not involved in the squeezing. You know, this is one of the ways how you can unlock your mind for strength. Where clients often discover that they were unknowingly holding themselves back. And obviously, as you get closer to the real failure that your body is able to push you to, you unlock your true potential and your muscle strength and size will follow. All right, stage two or phase two dynamics. In the power phase, we will focus on intensity. We'll be adding a much greater emphasis on type two muscle fiber or fast twitch muscle fibers as, some, uh, as they're called. So that means we switched Alvaro to a hybrid workout protocol. It's called a hybrid because we will alternate between two very different workouts and effectively stimulate two different muscle fibers, type one and type two. And if you wanna get super technical, we'll also be stimulating two different kinds of hypertrophy, myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic, but we'll not get into that uh, in any detail in this video. So workout A, high intensity, low volume, full body, as our workouts tend to be, uh, give or take four to seven reps, two to three sets per movement pattern. And we have four movement patterns, like they said, they're all compounds and we rotate them. Uh, you can pick them from the primal six and just, yeah, just rotate them every macro cycle. Four to five minutes of rest between uh, sets. So you are fully rested. None of that, you know, 60 seconds uh, crap. You're not getting anything out of it. Workout B is low to medium intensity and high volume. Still a full body workout, but this time made up of isolation movements plus leg press. Uh, leg press is kind of a compound, but you know, it's still in there because it's very valuable. 15 to 25 reps and two to four sets per movement pattern. So the body parts that you're lacking or body parts that need to be stimulated a little bit more or the ones that we are testing for reps, um, you know, they need to counterbalance the workout A movement so that they work out together as a system and they're balanced. Total of eight movements per session. So that's six from primal six and two accessories, two to four minutes of rest between movements. So not enough rest that, you know, you lose in intensity, uh, but also not so little rest that you can't actually go at the weights, you know, with your full lot of energy. The unique aspect about this workout that I've never seen anybody else um, do this way is that we will also add a tertiary day, <laughs> posh word, um, we'll add a third kind of day, which is workouts X or accessory workouts or filler workouts. You can call them whatever you want. But these are small isolation 
workouts that are specifically for the small muscles and your <laughs> small muscles in your body like biceps triceps neck traps calves uh you know forearms all the things like that they're five to 30 minutes long five to eight movements and you know you can do all eight within 30 minutes because you don't really need much rest two to three sets per movement and one to two minutes of rest between movements um so that means you have three mandatory main days meaning days a and day b so that's what you have to do every week so if you do them like the regular way you do workout a on a monday workout b on a wednesday and then workout a on friday and then the next week you'd rotate them the other way so you'd have workout b on a monday workout a on a wednesday and then workout b again on a friday and the following week you would repeat the first week so that's how it works out workouts x however you fit in between these sessions as and when you have the time to do so so that means three mandatory days zero to four extra days as and when you have the free time and these can be done from home or anywhere else right so we design them because a lot of my guys you know they're entrepreneurial they travel they do like alvaro they take part in conferences they're speakers and so a lot of these workouts have to be adapted so that you can train them from home, right? You can do the three main days, or at least two main days, depending on the travel set schedule, but then the, the X workout is built so that you can do it from anywhere. Now, the reason we do this, the reason we have this tertiary or third kind of workout is very simple. Your big muscles, meaning, you know, chest, back, legs, they take a lot longer to recover than your small muscles. So you need to have breaks for your big muscles but your small muscles recover very fast, right? So if you look at the large muscle recovery, so you can think of the green line there as recovery, and you can also think of it as muscle protein synthesis, meaning how long the muscle grows for. So at the end of day one, super tired, you couldn't do the same workout again. Definitely not with that intensity. You've kind of, you know, left yourself out on the field. End of day two, you could probably do the same workout again. End of day three, you're definitely back, back on track. You can do the same workout again. So you need that rest day in the middle for the muscle to actually recover so you can stimulate it again so that it grows again. However, for small muscles, it works. Uh, it's, it's a much shorter time schedule, right? So around 12 hours in, you know, your muscles growing the most by the end of 24 hours, meaning next day, same time, your muscles not growing anymore. And so if you only work out your small, like if you work out your large muscles three times a week, you can see that every time you stimulate them, you get about two days of growth. So if you stimulate them three times a week, you get three times two days of growth, six days of growth, six days of growth. So your muscles basically growing six out of seven days. If you only stimulate your small muscles uh, one time a week, they will be growing for those 24 hours and then the remaining six days of that week, they're doing nothing. They're just chilling out, right? So if you don't train them every day, effectively what happens is you miss out on six days of growth. The super optimal training that would be like this. So you would train your big muscles every second day, right? As you recover, you would stimulate the muscle again. So you're just maximizing those growth windows. And the small muscle, you would stimulate every day, right? So small muscles get stimulated as you do the full body workout. And then on day two, we'd have a little in-between day, right? So you can kind of have a look at how this program would play out, specifically with this hybrid program, right? So Monday is a B day. You stimulate uh, full, like full body workout. Tuesday is an X day. You just do small muscles, accessories. Wednesday is an A day, again, full body workout. And so the next week, for example, you're traveling, right? You don't have as much time. You'd have Monday is an A day, Tuesday is an X day, Wednesday is a B day, and then Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're not working out, right? So you're still getting 400%, um, you know, the stimulation for the small muscles as of, well, I guess in this case, you're getting, you're still getting 33% more small muscle stimulation than you would have had uh, in this case. And if you stimulate your small muscles, like, you know, so have an arms day on Monday, and then you don't train arms afterwards, 
that would be absolutely ridiculous because then you would literally miss out on six days of growth. So hopefully this makes sense, right? So the filler workouts, like I said, can be very short, five to 30 minutes max. They also are not very taxing on your metabolism and nervous system and don't take that many calories to repair. So on those days, you can still eat at maintenance. Uh, and this way, your workout will contract or expand around your schedule. A lot of the guys, you know, they, they like to let off steam. They feel that after the gym, they feel just better, more relaxed. And so they want to have something they can do in the gym on those days when they're not supposed to be working out, but also in a way that doesn't cause recovery issues. They don't have any clashes so that your main muscle groups can recover. This is how you do it. This is how you set it up so that your workout can expand or contract as you have the time and there are no conflicts between the muscle uh, recovery schedules. All right, so yeah, you don't have to do these X workouts, but if you do, your gains will be accelerated. So phase three, physique or peaking phase. So to recap, at this stage, Alvaro has finished the priming phase and the power phase, just like you would have if you'd followed along, which means at this point, you're shredded, you're stronger than you've ever been, you've developed type one and type two muscle fiber, your technique and muscle activation is on point. Your joints and posture are pain-free and you are now primed to add as much muscle as you want and do it in a very short period of time. So, like I said, this third phase is where it gets really wild. Most guys want to skip the foundational work and just start here. But unless you have done the groundwork, it just won't work the same. Right. So in reality, at this stage, you already have a lean and aesthetic physique, right? You have a lean build. You could stop here, right? If you look at Alvaro's shape here, you know, you could say that's pretty reasonable for a guy that's very busy and, you know, definitely more attractive than he started out. But this stage is called physique for a reason, because we can do better than that. Um, this is where you will rise above the crowd and enter the elite physique territory and what's funny to hear about this is that it's almost irritating to people who have known you because they physically will not be able to wrap their minds around your transformation right they literally can't even it blows their mind they will argue that you're not natural or you're genetically gifted um, and the reason that you will be able to build your physique so fast is going to be because you did the work in phases one and two and they haven't right they're still stuck in the traditional cut and bulk cycle. So in this third and final stage, we will focus on a new metric called total work output, which means we'll find this sweet spot for all of your muscle groups for your specific body type and focus on hitting the optimal lifting volume to stimulate that muscle. So because you'll be seeing wild gains at this stage, it's often tempting to just do more and more and more. And it can be counterproductive because there's only so much muscle stimulation you can accumulate before it just becomes muscle damage, right? We're looking for the hormetic stimulus sweet spot. If you've ever seen this chart, this is exactly how vaccines work. This is also how um, cold exposure, you know, works. And gym is no different. It's a hormetic stimulus. And we ideally are looking to peak out right here. So if you are not unfamiliar with how this chart works, this is the amount. So on the X axis, we have the amount of stimulus, right? In this case, that would be per muscle group, one set, two sets, five sets, eight sets, 20 sets, right? So it kind of goes on and that's the effect. Obviously the bottom red zone, negative in the green, we have the positive. And so the way this chart works is that if you have four sets here, six sets right at the peak, and eight sets here, then ha having done four sets or eight sets has the same muscle growth benefit to you. But obviously in one of the scenarios, you have wasted a lot more energy. And now you also have a much bigger recovery load, which means it could impact your next workout. And so it is absolutely key that in this stage, we find that sweet spot because we don't want no junk volume. You don't wanna be going to the gym so that <laughs> you don't wanna be spending time and effort in the gym and end up gain, may, making less progress than you would have if you had just taken your foot off the gas a bit, 
right? And this happens. It happens so much. Guys kind of fall into one of two camps. One, they don't work hard out hard enough. Or camp number two, they work out too hard and they waste effort. They never had to waste and they slow down their progress because they, you know, worked out too hard. And if you look at this chart, you can kind of see how that works. If you are in the red zone, then by the end of day one, you know, your performance is lowered. You couldn't do the same workout again. End of day two, same. End of day three, now you can maybe do the same workout again, right? So it's taking you literally 72 hours to recover. Um, you know, it's a long time. However, if you're in the, in the green zone, end of day one, you couldn't do the same workout again. End of day two, you already could. And end of day three, your performance is actually increased now. You could do an even heavier workout, you know, whether that means more reps, more sets, or more weight. That's what we want. We want, we want to stimulus, stimulate your muscle enough to make it grow at the maximum rate, but not so much that your performance is lowered for the next workout. So at this stage, we will look at your data and build a workout that hits the right muscles, the right way, at the right volume, for you. This stage used to be called build, you know, some people call it bulk. I don't like that term at all. So we have optimized everything to build your body. And that's the mindset you want to be having. You want to imagine this as the stage you literally build areas that you want to be built up and not the ones you don't. Next, let's move on to the nutrition and the fuel section. The heavier the lifting day, the more calories you should eat. It sounds pretty obvious. I would have thought it's obvious, but sometimes it isn't. Right? So because we'll be adding muscle so fast in this final stage, we're going to get very mindful about the specific areas that you add that muscle to. Like I said, we want an aesthetic and balanced physique, one that's functional, but also looks attractive with or without clothes on. This will vary from person to person. Maybe it's bigger arms for you. Maybe it's bigger shoulders for me. As I said, this is the stage that everybody wants to jump to, but just ends up like a fatter version of themselves because they don't do the essential groundwork and they hit plateaus, they get injuries, but obviously not you because you've seen this video. This final stage doesn't really end, but I do recommend synchronizing it, it with seasons, right? So that you add the weight or you go through the physique stage as the winter begins, then a few weeks before summer, you switch back into phase one and then throughout the summer, you switch into the power phase because Power phase allows you to travel and allows you that flexibility in the summer. You can even scale it back to two times a week workouts or even one time a week workouts. There's a way to do that. So you have maximum flexibility. Plus you have enough calories that you can afford to go out and eat whatever you want while still staying in shape. Right? So now that Alvaro has figured this process out, it's basically second nature to him, although I'm still coaching him. <laughs> It, but it's just rinse and repeat, right? And next year, same time, he probably could compete on stage if he wanted to, right? So he now fully controls the way he shows up in the real world. So if you look at his journey here, it's crazy. In just such a short amount of time, the progress he's made is crazy. And if you met the guy in real life and spoke to him, the way he feels about himself, it's a big leap, right? And I know that many guys never get there even after years of trying. So guys, that's the Cut CEO blueprint. It's meant to strip away the unnecessary body fat and rebuild your physique to a full, powerful and muscular frame in less than 180 days. And for Alvaro, obviously the results are totally worth it, right? Having a permanent six pack felt so good that he had to check himself in the mirror every time he walked past. Getting compliments from others got so common, even overwhelming, that he didn't actually want it to stop. And in fact, like I said, his whole identity changed. And you might think it's kind of funny, right? Because people say it's just vanity. But what you realize is that it's not true. See, I was out of shape my whole life. And let me tell you, when you get in real shape, people around you treat you differently. I wish it wasn't so, but we both know it is. You get respect even from people who don't want to give it because being in great shape means something and you can't fake it. How many people do you know that live their whole life in a body they don't like? 
a lot, right? How many people wear beach shirts or avoid the beach altogether? I did, you know, you can see me here hiding my gut. How many men do you know wear baggy clothes and literally hide themselves away? It's a lot, right? So is it surprising then that when you get the body you want, your life actually changes? So the character development I get to see every single day is amazing. But if I wouldn't know that that's one of the biggest benefits, I wouldn't bring it up because you can't see on the outside the person's change on the inside. And I get to talk to these guys every day. So and I, let me tell you, the change on the inside is even greater than the change on the outside. We can pretend like this stuff is not important, but we both know it's true, right? The real cost of not having the body you want is the rest of your life, right? And that's the whole reason for the Cut CEO Blueprint, guys. So it's basically like you're reborn, you 2.0. We strip away all the unnecessary stuff and rebuild you into the ultimate man you were supposed to be. So that's literally what the Cut CEO Blueprint is. So now that you understand exactly how this process works, I have an offer for you. If you're skinny, fat, overweight, or just sick of not having the physique you want, and you're ready to look great with your shirt off, make the most physical progress you have ever made in a short amount of time, and you're aware that there's more life out there for you, and you feel that inner calling, calling you to be better than you are now, then I will personally help you lose at least 10% of your body weight and pack on 15 pounds of lean muscle in just 180 days using the Cut CEO Blueprint. And I'll literally give you back your money if it doesn't work. I'll give you your money back, right? So go ahead, click the link below the video or go to cutceo.link forward slash start. And from there, book a call with me and I'll see if you're a good fit for the team. And I'll personally get you to lose 10% of your body weight, gain 15 pounds of muscle, literally double your strength that you keep forever in just 180 days or less, or you get all of your money back, right? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to chatting with you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.